Hi guys, I'm Daniel. And I'm Dennis. This is our son Dean. And this is our son Devin. And together we are the Marzoa family. And that is your corny intro. Every YouTube video needs a corny intro. I agree. And that was ours. And in this video, we're gonna talk about our IVF process and everything that it took to create these beautiful kids. November 7th at 8.30 and we are on our way to our egg retrieval at Boca Fertility Clinic. How do you feel? Excited and nervous. Same, I couldn't sleep last night but just wanted to do this little video to document our steps along the way so we can look back. Just got to Boca Fertility for our egg retrieval. Egg retrieval. So we just got out of Boca Fertility. I'm so happy. We're so happy. Day one. Day one has begun. I love watching that video. It brings back such great memories and a lot of uh, emotions. Yeah, it was the first day, so it was a, a big day for us. Huge. Ultimately, we ended up using an agency, which is an egg donor agency and a surrogate agency called Family Formers. They're a two-in-one agency and naturally it was very fitting for us. We really needed that extra support and the hand holding throughout the entire process. And, and they, they just awesome. made it, yes, they were awesome. They made it very comfortable for us. So it was the perfect fit for us to choose them for the entire process. We were looking for originally an egg donor that was a Cuban American, right? Mm -hmm. Someone, because since we're Cuban American, we kind of wanted to continue that uh, with our children. Yeah, However, we wanted somebody similar in all characteristics and background and looks kind of to us, uh, just to, that, that's just what we were looking for. However, what we found out was that when you do look in your same background, then you could potentially carry the same genetic disorders. We chose an egg donor that was a proven egg donor with high AMH, high follicle counts to give us the biggest chance for success. At the end of this, what matters most is that you have the baby and you want to be able to increase your chances throughout the entire process and pick the best candidate for that possibility. So what we did during our process, we took all the eggs, we split them up. He got half the eggs, I got the other half of the eggs. We fertilized them separately and then we let them sit until they reach blastocyst stage, which takes about five, six days. Yeah, about five days or so and then sometimes they go on to the sixth day and when it reaches the fifth or sixth day you get the final count and you freeze them until transfer day exactly and then you go to transfer day today is november 26 2019 and dennis and i are on our way to boca fertility it is our transfer day a day that we have been waiting for for a very long time. We've done a lot of research and a lot of planning just to get ready for this day, not only in the last year and a half, but our whole entire life. It's a day that we have only dreamt that it would happen, and here we are, November 26, 2019, a day to remember. Okay, we just got out. Holy moly, was that Intense. Intense. So we went in with our surrogate and her husband and they just put the embryos in just like that. And it was just a surreal moment. We were nervous, excited, happy, and that's it. So in what, five days in five, or nine days, we nine find days. out if we're pregnant. Uh, so there's the latest update. And now we're gonna go grab some ice cream with our surrogate. So on transfer day, we did a double embryo transfer. Yeah. And that's something that has to be discussed with your surrogate. It has to be in contract and discussed with the attorneys because not every surrogate is willing to carry two babies. Also, not every IVF clinic like Boca Fertility is willing to transfer two embryos. Because there is always a chance for splitting and in our case, if you do a double embryo transfer, there's a chance for a double split. So it's a very high risk situation that not every clinic is willing to take on. It was a very 
exciting time, a very stressful time, a lot of anxiety, just kind of waiting. Because once we did the embryo transfer, we wait. We waited and waited, and how long did we wait? Well, when, when, when was the first time we heard? Maybe four to five days in, we heard from our from our surrogate. Mm -hmm. And where were we? I don't remember. It was Friendsgiving. We were at dinner with our friends, and we basically had to pretend like everything was fine, right? So our surrogate calls Teresa at Family Formers, and that's not a phone call that you necessarily always get, right? They don't always call you, especially at night. So we knew something was up. We ran outside of the restaurant, and, and everybody was like, "What is going on?" All of our friends were looking at us. They're like, "What's going on? Why did they sneak out?" They thought something happened, like there was an emergency which it is kind of an emergency, but... And then they basically called us and told us that she was pregnant. She had done, I pregnant. think it was a four day post transfer pregnancy test, which is not always recommended because it can always give you a false positive, but she had a slim throw of a line, which is a pregnancy. Ah! That was incredible. That was... So our surrogate was doing at home pregnancy tests for days four, five, six, seven. I think she did like four or five tests at a minimum. Uh, up until day 10 where she went in for blood work to see if there was an actual pregnancy and the tests were correct. So on day 10, we got an initial reading about 300 and change uh, HCG level, which means that you are pregnant. And then every few days thereafter, it's expected that the, that, that number to double when you have a singleton pregnancy. Our number kept quadrupling over and over every two to three days until we reached about, I think, a level of 18,000. So at that point, we knew that we were pregnant, but we didn't know if it was one or two because it really depends on the woman, right? Like some women, like my best friend, which is pregnant at the same time, her levels were even higher. And she had a singleton. So don't always guide yourself by those numbers because they can be deceiving depending on the person, yeah. right? It could also be lower and you can have twins. But what we knew for sure was that we were pregnant and we were so happy. And that was the most important part. Whether it was one or two, we knew we were pregnant. So that was exciting. That was a memorable time for us. Today is December 19th, 2019. And the follow-ups have been that our surrogate has done a bunch of pregnancy tests and they're all positive. She's done her blood work and all of her numbers look really, really good. But today, we do our first sonogram. Ultrasound. What's a sonogram? I don't know. <laughs> sonogram. I'm not familiar. I know it's, it's the something. same thing. Okay. Sonogram ultrasound. I think it's the same thing. <laughs> so we are very excited and eager to potentially hear the heartbeat for the first time. So we're so excited. Okay, we're at the office. Okay, here we are, world. <laughs> I want to introduce you to our beautiful surrogate. Say hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> this is Tiffany. And I'm super excited. It's ultrasound day. First ultrasound. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and this is Amy. No, we're doing a video. You ready? I'm ready. Sorry. I'm very excited. Yes. You have two babies here. Oh my gosh. You have two sacks, so we're going to see. I see we're going to see a heartbeat on one. So now, guys, you know, we're going to double all your charges now. <laughs> Did he tell you all that stuff? Yeah, I'm sure it's in the contract <laughs> that, that we signed. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'll let you know when we get to the, you know, when we get to the view of the Grand Canyon, I'll let you know. Because we're going to magnify it and we'll see a lot better. This is just measuring the, uh, the uterus, so this is more physical. Uh, so. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, we just got out and we're having... Twins! Twins! Twins. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> we walked out of the room and just bawled. Just yeah. cried our eyes out. Just pure happiness. Even though you can't tell by my emotion right now, I, I think <laughs> I'm in a state of shock and beyond happiness. Probably just processing 
what that means and still keeping our fingers crossed that she our surrogate is only six weeks today and we heard the heartbeats and we heard two heartbeats and it was a beautiful thing so hearing our baby's heartbeats for the first time finding out that we were having twins i think more so just seeing those two sacks when they put that probe in i was in shock it was a lot to take in. I mean, we have the babies and it's still surreal. Yeah, definitely. But that was an incredible moment. Like, I was so surprised. I never, honestly, I just, I never really expected that success rate for us to have those two babies in there. I, I did not expect it. Did you expect, expect it? I was hoping for it. Yes. I mean, there's always that hope, but you hear all these probabilities and, and you never, I, you know, I just never felt we would fall into that probability. It was a 30% chance and we were hoping that we were even at a 30% chance. Yeah, and then right away the doctor jumps in. He's like, now let's see if there's a split. And we immediately freaked. There was no split. <laughs> at that point, we didn't know what sex they were. But we also didn't do PGT testing. We really thought about that a lot, right? Whether we should or shouldn't do it. Ultimately, we wanted for nature to take its course and whatever. I mean, there's only so much you one can control. So we just wanted to let that part of the process go and do it on its own. And ultimately, we had done so much research, so much testing that we felt it was safe not to do PGT testing. Yeah, I would recommend anybody that's going through this process to surround yourself with professionals, you know, follow your gut. What we did in this experience was everything I wanted to know what the worst case scenario was, right? So the more I knew about the possibilities of what happens if it happened, if it didn't happen, and then what were our options, that was almost like therapeutic and calmed me down because I knew what the next steps would be. And we pretty much did that for every single part of this process. We did worst case scenario even for the budget, for the surrogate, for the donor, for the IPF process. We wanted to know every possibility of something going awry in order to prepare ourselves. You know, anything is possible, guys. This was just a dream of ours that became a reality. It was something that we hoped and we had dreamed about it and wished about it and it finally came true. So to anybody who's thinking about going through IVF, thinking about surrogacy, don't lose hope right? It might take one try, two tries. Just don't give up. Yeah, never give up because dreams do come true. And we are living proof of that. Exactly. So that was a glimpse of what it took for Dennis and I to create these beautiful little babies. So if you have any questions for us, please comment those down below. If you have any future videos that you'd like to see from us, let us know and we'll work on that for you. Yes. Until next time, thank you and take care.